Let's talk about how we move from position to velocity in math, okay? So um, if we have something moving like this image that we just saw, um, we can plot the position, right, at each point. So here, if we just take snapshots every second, like we did before with the Roomba, this is where we are at zero seconds, one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, okay? Um, if we want to draw the velocity vectors, we don't necessarily, the displacement vectors don't tell us as much as the velocity vectors. Here are our velocity vectors. This is what we call uniform motion, which means constant velocity. That's all it really means, okay? What do you notice about all these arrows? Yeah, they're all the same length, which means they're a constant velocity. We are not changing speeds, okay? So if we take uniform motion, how do we plot this on sort of an xy coordinate system? Well, this is what we call a position versus time graph. So here, let's just say we take our position line, right? This is our x-axis. But we want to do position, which would make it the y, versus time. So y in the graphical sense, not in the directional sense, OK? So we basically tilt it up like this. We keep the same units. And now it's sort of the y-axis. And we use time as our x-axis. Okay, so remember X, Y, Z, mostly like horizontal, well, it gets confusing, horizontal and vertical and Z is this way depending on what you're doing, but they all change. These are all just what we call sort of dummy variables. They're a stand-in to keep track of things, okay? When we're talking about the X, Y of a graph, that's just so you know, well, when you say Y equals MX plus B, what's Y now? X, right? What's what's x now? Y. T. <laughs> right? This is our y-axis. This is our x-axis. So you would say x equals m t plus b. Right? And remember, m is the slope, which we don't have anything on the graph, so it doesn't matter yet. And b is the y-intercept, which in this case would be the x-intercept. Okay? So you just you you have to take these things you know from math, and you have to map them to what you're doing in physics, okay? And once you start doing that, it's not that complicated, but get used to that process. So anyway, this is what we call a position versus time graph. You're gonna get intimately familiar with them in the lab this, this week. Um, that's what we're working on. But if you wanna plot this, where are we at zero seconds? Position zero. So we put a dot there, okay? What about a one second? So at one second, we're at 200, so we do that. Okay, and then we keep going. At two seconds, we're up here at 400. At three seconds, we're up here at 600. At four seconds, we're at 800. Okay, and then we draw a line through these because, oh, and also in a physics graph, if we measure something, it should be represented by a dot. The line tells you the trend, but the dot tells you the measurements. So we need both of those things. Okay, unless we took an infinite number of measurements and we're really sure of our model, right? The, the line represents the model, the dots represent the data. So if you're graphing something from a lab, you have both dots and a line. Okay, uh, business majors are the only people who get to do just like lines without telling you where the things are because they're liars mostly, okay? Um, or they don't understand math. So anyway, here's uniform motion. We're getting rid of the dots because we're just talking about the model now. Okay, the model of uniform motion says that has to be a straight line because, remember, this is a position versus time graph. Uniform motion is constant velocity. So how do we find the velocity from this graph? Slope, right? Because it's a derivative. Take the derivative of the graph, it's a slope. If you take the derivative of this, what's cool about this slope? It's constant. It doesn't change, okay? So if we want to do the, uh, the good old um, rise over run, right, that's the easiest way to take slope. You can see this gives you um, uniform motion. So this, in this case, in the case of uniform motion, the average velocity is the same as the instantaneous velocity because at every point of the motion, the average velocity and the instantaneous velocity are the same. Okay? That's not always the case. That is why uniform motion is special. All right? Okay. So the slope of the graph gives velocity. What, oh, what's B in this case? Like if we do Y equals MX plus B, which is now X equals MT, well, actually X equals VT, 
right? Because we know the slope is velocity. X, let me write that out. So we start from y equals mx plus b. That's just a math definition, yes? Okay. Then we know for our case, this is x equals velocity, right? Or in this case, just a velocity. Uh, and then what's this? T? And then there's still this b. What's this b now? The x intercept, which is in this case what? Zero. Zero. So if you wrote this, it would just be x equals bt. Okay? Cool. So here's, oh, I guess I animated this too. Uh, yeah, there. <laughs> and it turns out this would be your initial position. That's what I mean by the initial conditions, okay? So if you were integrating backwards to get this definition, that would be your plus c, this thing. Okay, so unless somebody told you what it was, it would just be an unknown plus c. All right, cool. Here is a, so, oh, is this, is it, this equation is going to come up a lot. Is it always true for all motion? No. Or is it a special case? Uniform. It's a special case for uniform motion, which means constant velocity. Okay, so if your velocity is not constant, should you use this equation? When is velocity not constant? When you're, when you're accelerating. So for instance, if, if I um, drop my keys, was that velocity constant? No, because it's definitely accelerating because of this whole gravity thing we're dealing with. Okay, so it's only for constant velocity. And we're starting with it not because it's the, the full definition, but because it's the easiest one to understand. Okay. Let's try a problem. So, just think about this and how it would look on the graph. So it's A, C, or D with a strong vote for D. So please discuss and we'll vote again. Ooh, it's unanimous. Cool. Anyone, anyone, okay. anyone want to explain why the slope is negative? I guess because it's pointing to the air axis, the arrows are pointing to the left. Yeah, the, the velocity is pointing to the left. So this is the positive direction, that's the negative direction. Anyone want to explain why, it, even though the slope's negative, it's this one and not this one? It crosses zero. Yeah, it crosses the zero. And you can tell it crosses the zero because you can see it actually moving past the zero. Okay? So that's what we mean when we're doing graph. You guys are going to be, you're just going to kill the lab. This is exactly what we're doing in the lab, except instead of looking at these, you have to be this dot. Okay, so one of you gets to be a dot. You can be a particle for a day. Um, okay, cool. All right, uh, oh, this was supposed to be at the break, I forgot, but um, what's this? Velociraptor. Yeah, how do you get a velociraptor? <laughs> Displacement raptor over, over time raptor, right? No? Yeah? Okay, good. <laughs> This is a joke for everyone. Um, it's actually an average velociraptor because, like, it's not instant, it's not a derivative. So, just just FYI. Yeah. Sorry. This is the quality of jokes in this class. If you don't like it, you might have to find another instructor. <laughs> What's up? Don't the raptors cancel out. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna have to adjust my slide. <laughs> no one has pointed that out in years. <laughs> I've been using this joke for. Since 2014, so extra credit point for you. <laughs> oh my god, okay. Hang on, I have to recover from that. So anyway, if we want to plot the velocity graph here, we have to take the position graph. We know it's the derivative, but since we know this is uniform motion, all we really need is the slope. So we find the slope, and then what do we do with that? So let's say our slope's 400 meters, right? Because uh, we've moved 800, or sorry, 400 meters. That's our displacement. Sorry. And then we divide that by our time, which is two seconds. So what do we get? Yeah, our delta V is going to be 200 meters per second. How do we represent that on this graph? Straight line. It is a straight line. Is it? Here, here, here. 200, right? So it's a straight line at 200. Um, it's 200 meters. Oh, oh no. <laughs> okay. 
Let's see. Cool. Sorry. All right, 200 meters per second, right? And like I said, we're using colors sort of as visual indicators. So blue always means position. Green always means velocity. Orange always means acceleration. That's the same as in the book. And I'm going to try to do that just so it's clear what we're talking about, OK? Um, you don't have to do it, but it does help. So just a question. What does the velocity graph look like when the position graph is constant? It's also a line, but where is it? Zero. Zero, right? So if you're not moving, what's your velocity? Yeah, nothing. So what are you doing here? If this was you, where are you standing? 400 meters, right? On, on whatever this coordinate system is you, you're 400 meters away from something, OK? All right. So we're going to try a problem. So I'd like you guys to sort of attempt this. We'll take a few minutes and do it. So this position versus time graph represents, oh, here's the position versus time graph. This represents two people walking. So pick someone to work with, or you can work in a group, a small group of three or four. Um, so part A is just determine their velocities. Okay, so how are we going to determine their velocities? We're going to take the slope. Okay, so you're going to find the slope of this, slope of this. It doesn't have to be perfect, just close. Okay, because I, I didn't draw this great. So, you know, just do your best guess at where the, the endpoint is and how to get the slope. Um, and then describe what's happening in words. Okay? That's, that's the trickier part. And I will randomly call on a person to describe what's happening in words when we're done working on this. Um, and I'll just be walking around if you guys need help. Okay? So take about five minutes. Yes, we find the slope of each one. So we'll start with this guy, right? So we'll say the velocity of this one, um, and this is the average and instantaneous velocity because we're talking about uniform motion, is going to be delta x over delta t. So what's the easiest way to do this? I mean, you can pick any two points, but what are the easy points? Yeah, at 0 and 1, right? So here you have stuff at 0. That means you're at 2. And then you have something at 1. That means you're up here. Let's call that 8 just because we want to make our lives easy, OK? Um, so that means our change in position is 8. That's our final position, minus 2, which is our initial position. So 8 minus 2 meters, OK? And our change in time is 1 second. But you could call that 1 minus 0. We're not going to bother with that 1 second. So this ends up being 6 divided by 1, which is 6 meters per second. Is that positive or negative? Positive. positive. So we could write this as a velocity vector. Uh, we'll call that in the x hat direction. Okay. Next, um, we have this thing. So this is the other person. So that velocity is going to be delta x over delta t. Um, the, you can see those colors, yeah. How much, so we start here, we'll end here. We go from about 1 to negative 1, OK? So that's going to be negative 1 minus 1 meter, OK? Divided by 1 second. So what does that give us? Negative. That should give us negative 2 meters per second. Um, if we want to write that as a vector, that's also going to be in the x hat direction. But remember, this negative tells us it's in the negative direction. Okay, So you could either know the absolute value of your displacement, which is 2, and then add the negative because you can see that it's in the negative direction. Or you can do it mathematically by knowing your final position is negative and you do the subtraction. Okay, Either of those will work. So that's part A. That means we know that we have um, the velocity of the blue one is 6 meters per second, and the velocity of the light blue one is negative 2 meters per second. So we have our slopes, so therefore our velocities. Um, what about their motion? How would we describe their motion? These two people are doing what? Where do they start? Yeah, so they start, the, the, the dark blue guy starts at 2 meters, all right? And the light blue guy starts at 1 meter. So you have someone, let's say, this is our zero, so that means there's someone standing here at two meters and maybe someone over here at one meter, 
Okay, what's the person at two meters doing? Let's say this is the positive direction. Walking this way, pretty fast, right? Actually, we know how fast walking is. How, how fast is walking? One to two meters per second. Are they walking really? No, they're kind of like running, okay? And they're running pretty fast. Five meters per second is pretty fast. Go on a treadmill, turn it up to five. That's not even meters per second, but like it's, it's still fast, okay? Um, then this person's over here. What are they doing? They're actually walking, but which direction? This way. So they're walking this way. So you have someone that runs that way, someone that walks this way. Do they ever cross paths? No. No, and you can see these lines don't cross, right? So that's what's actually happening. So now you, you, we've been describing motion, like we, what something's doing. We made it into a graph. You can also look at a graph and describe what's happening backwards.